and let's start. So, TA LFA, let's talk. Uh, so far, we discussed LFA, pure regular LFA, uh, for the link protection or protection, and for the also, uh, what about the destination, third prefix, LFA, we've seen. After that, we talked about the remote LFA and tunnel based, I mean, uh, at least LDP based LSPs in Cisco, Juniper, etc. configuration implementation. And with that one, we understood what is P-space, what is extended P-space, Q-space, and PQ-node. After we understood that, uh, as a conclusion, what we said for the remote LFA, remote LFA might bring extra coverage, more coverage, which means we have a bigger chance to find the backup loop-free path compared to regular LFA, we said. But then, uh, what we said, Remote LFA may not protect 100% of the topologies, which means, depends on the topology, depends on the host assignment metric. We may not be able to find a backup path, loop-free backup path, even with the remote LFA, even with the RLFA, remote LFA, right? So in that case, we, we have only one more chance, which is TI LFA with the with that LFA type of uh, algorithms. Uh, so basically, TLFA will provide us 100% coverage, regardless of the topology, regardless of the metric assignment. This is a little bit cheating, actually. Uh, there are a couple corner cases, and I might be covering also in this uh, course with the special topologies. And uh, uh, but for now, let's just assume that. It provides post-optimal convergence paths, which means, I, I actually explained this one before, we have three paths, let's say, primary is the top one, and data plane maybe is telling us, FRR is telling us, use the mid, mid path, and control plane might tell us, use the bottom path, so third one. If, and uh, of, when primary fails, Normally, what will happen? FRR will immediately kick in if we have the FRR path, so phase three route path. And if control plane later on tells us, no, don't use that FRR path, use the third one, then it means FRR is not giving us post-optimal. After the convergence, I mean, it is not optimal path. So if control plane would also tell, okay, we have three, and data plane is telling that you use the mid path, second path, and control plane also tells that yes, sec second path is the optimal, then we call that, that path, the FRR path is the post-optimal convergence path. Okay, that's the full idea. And post-optimal convergence path may not be guaranteed, cannot be given as a guarantee that uh, with the LFA and remote LFA, but with the TI-LFA, yes. Even with this RSVP phase three route, post-optimal convergence guarantee we cannot get. So, which means RSVP-based protection may not give you that FRR path as the post-optimal convergence path. LFA, remote LFA, no. TI LFA, yes. Okay. And less protocol, we are, these are probably some advantages of TI LFA. Less protocol and eliminating targeted LDP session. Targeted LDP session came, by the way, in the remote LFA, not the regular LFA, not RSVP, obviously. LDP, why LDP is there anyway? It's RSVP. But uh, remote LFA, we basically, from the source to the PQ node, we create that tunnel, I said, not tunnel, LSP, that is targeted LDP session based. Targeted, so multi-hop maybe, but LDP session between those source and the PQ node. So we don't need that targeted LDP session with TI LFA. Uh, in fact, also less protocol, we say, uh, why? Uh, we don't have RSVP. Uh, we don't have LDP even need here. IGP, enough. Uh, LDP, why you need? Because now with TI LFA, we have segment routing. And with segment routing, we eliminate LDP and RSVP in the transport, right? So that's why. So less protocol, correct, and more topology coverage. I mean, really, it is good, but a little bit. You need to understand the terminology and what's happening with the segment routing. So now here, exigency seed, exigency label uh, idea will come, and we will talk about it. So if the requirements then 100% coverage, post-optimal convergence path, or uh, eliminating the protocol, so simplified overall solution, overall solution, and 
eliminating those target LDP session, which is good, also reduces the complexity, uh, then uh, TIRFA is the only choice. If all of them, because if the requirement is 100% coverage, then not the TI-LFA is the only choice. RSVP FRR also is the, another choice. Post-optimal convergence path. So even if you combine these two of them, TI-LFA is the only choice. Or uh, this one and this one TI-LFA. Okay. Or, I mean, post-optimal convergence path TILF actually, only if, the, if I will try this one as well. Okay. Yes, now there is a topology. In this topology, we will not be able to find LFA. We will not be able to find remote LFA also. But TILFA will work, so which means we will be able to find uh, backup path. Obviously, uh, this is uh, the topology which we have been discussing, but in this case, the bit the metric between R5 and R6 is different, okay? And still ring topology, same routers, number of routers same, but the metric is changed on the R5 and R6. And we will see now what will happen, okay? So source is the R2, destination is R6, so traffic normally would follow this path, obviously, primary. Okay. And backup path could be this one. Loop-free backup path, now we will check that one. R3 obviously cannot do LFA function because over here, one, two, three, over here, two, three, ten. So R3 is using R2 as the next stop, so there is no LFA. What about uh, remote LFA. So for remote LFA, what we need to know, who is the P space and who is the Q space? If not enough to find the PQ node, then who is the extended P space and Q space? And we will check, check in that case if there is a PQ node. And if not, RLFA also will not work. So for that, let's have a look. What is the P space first? P space, the, uh, the routers which R2 can reach without going through this link. So basically, which ones R2 can reach to this one? So one versus two. R2 uh, also can reach to four. Why? Because, I mean, one, two, three over here. One, two, nine. So what about R5? Yes, also R5 because one, three, four over here, two, nine. So R5, even P space. Okay. Then, and also by the way, this is R5 is extended P space as well because R3 up to which router can reach without using this one. We will see now if R6, let's say, if we evaluate this one is P as, that, as well as extended P also up to here. So R6, R2 to here is 2. So over here, R6 definitely cannot be a P space. What about extended P? 2, 3, 10. So R3 also using this one. So R6 cannot be extended P or P. So extended P also up to this one. So we know that now up to here we have extended P space. What about Q space? The routers which will reach to R6 without traversing this R2, R1. Which router can be? Obviously this one can be because this is one. Uh, you see, over here, it could be so much. 1, 2, 4, 5, 12. What about even R5? Can it be a Q space router? Can it reach to R6 without traversing here? Let's see. R5 to R6 is 7. R5 to R6 over the another direction, how many? 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this one was intentionally done 7, obviously. So... 7 over here, 6 over here, R5 is not even in the Q space, so obviously this guy is also not, because if not, this one, the others cannot be, because you are adding extra cost here. So R6 Q space, only this one here. And extended P space up to here, so you don't have any intersection, so R2 cannot find any router here in this topology to tunnel the traffic. So, which means there is no loop-free alternate routers. 
So we need to do something else. Okay, so that's something else, obviously. TI LFA. So not the remote LFA. So in this topology, there is no overlapping router between extended P space and Q space, so there is no PQ node. Correct. Okay. What we are doing then with TLFA, we push some labels, segment IDs, labels we are doing here, SRMPLS, let's assume, not this IV6. So we push some MPLS labels. This MPLS label, we have actually here three labels. Uh, and in this text like this, 16,006, let's say, 24,065, and 16,005. So R2 pushes, R3 receive, and when R3 get this, 16,005 is the node seed, we call it in the segment routing, of the R5. So before that, so up to here, normally if there will be even 20 routers, <coughs> sorry, this top label, this top label 16,005 would be just swept with this itself in the data plane. Okay, so you need swap operation in the MPLS and itself, so it will not be changed. Node seed is global wide, so domain wide. Okay, so. Every router knows the R5 node seed as 16,005. So this is global sRGB segment routing, global block concept. So it is good for the troubleshooting, by the way. Okay, so but who will remove it? There is a PHP process also in the segment routing, which means penultimate hop popping. The router, the right before the endpoint router for that uh, LSP will do the PHP regular MPLS operation and it removes that 16,005 and send the this label stack to the R5. Now when R5 receive it, basically two labels there, right? So 16,006 which is the node seed of the R6 but there is another label here 24,065 without that if R5 would push uh, the traffic with this label, traffic would be looped back here. Because 7 here, 6 here. So this label is very critical. Actually, it is doing the all TI-LFA operation. This is called agency label. And specific to this link, okay, so link local, that one, of course, advertised in the entire IGP here. But... It is, I mean, it, it makes sense for this router, which means it knows exactly what it will do with that label. So when it receives it, it is like, I don't care basically what uh, the routing says. I want to push the traffic over here. So even though IGP metric is 7 over here on the direct link and 6 in the total cumulative on this path, Still, with the agency seat, you don't listen what IGP says. You push the traffic with that label on this link. When R6 receive on that link, R6 receive without, of course, the agency label, which it will see that uh -huh, label is 16,006. It's for me, so I am the destination. So this operation very critical. Agency seat is helping us to, to, to do the TILFA here. Let me repeat, this topology R3 in the beginning was not LFA because it is using also for this destination R6, R2 as the next route. We also checked P space, extended P space and Q spaces to find if there is any PQ node. So our LFA could work without agency seat, etc. Without segment routing enabled in this network, we could find a loop free router and programmed into the ribbon fit, but we couldn't. So then TA-LFA with segment routing was enabled in this topology and TA-LFA, of course, we need to enable the prefixes, we need to put the, those node seeds, it, it has to be unique in the uh, domain, so it, uh, those nodes advertise their uh, label values to each other, actually a little bit different than that, so index values, etc., 
uh, will be advertised. And then everyone knows basically how to reach to any other guy via shortest path. The shortest path based on the node seat. So R2 would know what's the node seat of R1, seat in thousand one. Actually, per router number, we assign six node seat here. 3001, 16,005, 6, etc. When you push the, with the segment routing, by the way, little bit segment routing needs to be understood here to understand the label operation. When this node seat is placed, node seat mean go to that node value, that label value which is advertised by whichever node, by using the shortest IGP cost. Right? Shortest IGP cost. But exigency seat is not like that. It doesn't care who is the shortest uh, path, etc. It pushes the traffic even if it's not in the shortest path. So like exactly what we did here. So with that exigency seat held, R5 was able to push the traffic, force the traffic to go over this link. Okay? Actually, this idea is not a new, of course. Just segment routing used. Uh, another idea is called uh, not via. Another phase 3 route mechanism, IP phase 3 route mechanism. If you check uh, on Google or on Ergun, phase 3 route mechanisms, in that article I am explaining also, it knows that over that link, with not why also, that there will be loop, but still you accept that. So, I will push. So, with exigency uh, seed in the segment routing, we push the traffic over here, although it's not in the shortest path. So, this was the TAL effect. And if we would summarize, this protect, this provide, I mean, 100% of the topologies. Doesn't matter, you, as you can see, the metric assignment, even if it is looped. I mean, even it is, if it is uh, not accepted, the IGP cannot use normally this thing, because uh, this is just seven, so longer path. This is six. It should be using normally this path. But uh, we are able to force the traffic to go over that direction. In fact, this is a classical exit routing idea. Uh, normally, with the uh, IGP protocols, if you let them alone, they will all attack the shortest path, right? They will all use the shortest path, if, even if you have multiple paths. But when we do exit routing, for example, we are able to specify whichever, manually we can say, whichever path we want, the routers uh, should be visited in the path, we can send the traffic to each and every even individual routers. So with the agency seat also, not only individual router, even if we have multiple links between the routers, which exactly layer two link, so even we have layer two agency seats for that, layer two link, we want to push the traffic, that layer two link even can be used. So let's say you have it in a bundle, four, six, 10, whatever link there, layer 2 bundle, so you create maybe on top of that layer 3 interface, single OSPF neighborship. So with the agency seat, you can push the traffic on whichever so that layer 2 uh, connectivity you, you have. So from that aspect, explicit routing point of view, agency seat is a uh, very powerful idea. So with that one, TILFA I think is uh, obvious as well, 100% topology coverage, less protocol usage because you don't need to enable RSVP here, uh, you don't need to enable LDP uh, even in this network so just IGP extensions obviously OSP for PAC LSS, ISAS, new TLV scans uh, 100 no uh, in the TILFA case uh, there are even TLVs I would say for the 134, 135 basically uh, and 22 for the uh, extensions so uh, these are just IGP extensions uh, not the new transport protocol, less protocol good for the OPEX, good for the uh, overall network uh, complexity, you will reduce. So, uh, TALFA is becoming also mature technology. Obviously, you, you can see much more RSVP deployment. It has been around for decades, but uh, this is also becoming mature technology. We should say this stuff and uh, uh, this LFA, RLFA and TALFA, uh, vendor interoperability point, point of view also strong. So many vendors in a consensus, they are supporting the, uh, these algorithms in this way. So vendor interoperability is not an issue. There are many tests also which you can find. So that's it. We will continue with the other videos.